ATF throws a temper tantrum and shuts down its online e-forms page, while also simultaneously embarrassing themselves in front of gun owners nationwide. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Congress yet again avoids passing pro-gun reforms by instead choosing to vote on a package of watered-down bills. Mitch McConnell, he's stepping down as minority leader, and somehow his potential replacement is even worse. It's been a wild couple of weeks here, folks. Let's dive in. If ATF hasn't or isn't losing credibility amongst gun owners and voters in this country, then we do not live in a real world. Look at these ATF experts showing us their expertise in firearms. And I wanna point out a couple things. People have pointed out ATF's ineptitudes during these clips, but I just wanna point out a couple things that are actually worrying and scary if you are a gun owner. First thing to note, Director Dettelbach himself saying purchasing firearms with cash is dangerous because that doesn't allow for credit card companies to track the purchasing of firearms. I, I hope and expect that as Americans, we will all do that, but those aren't, you know, if somebody comes into your store in a border state and plunks down $12,000 cash money for one of these things mm -hmm. uh, so that there's no credit card trail. So why is it detrimental to gun owners if our purchases of firearms are being tracked? Um, you may have seen our video on FISA and the 702 loophole. You may have seen our videos on the merchant category codes where credit card companies are using merchant category codes to track the purchases of firearms. This is all an attempt to compile data on you to create a digital profile on you. What you like to do, where you like to go, who you talk to, et cetera, et cetera. Now, why does the government need all this information on you, especially that you are purchasing firearms? Well. We're not scared to say the quiet part out loud. As gun owners, we know lists and the compiling of information leads to confiscation. We often overuse the term gaslighting and say people are just gaslighting us to say it. But this is literally the definition of gaslighting. For the last 10 years, ATF has said pistol braces, no big deal. The more the merrier. All good here. And that was Obama's ATF saying this. Well, since the Biden administration has failed to pass their gun control agenda in Congress, the ATF has shifted stances. Watch as Director Dettelbach explains the dangers of pistol braces. So Congress determined back in the 1930s that short-barreled rifles, which were both smaller than a certain length mm -hmm. and you know, were designed to be fired from the shoulders, that combination made it unusually dangerous. Right, so, so here's two things. These are look exactly alike, right? Mm -hmm. I defy, you know, one of them, everybody would agree is a short barreled rifle because it's sold in one piece. The other one's the exact same thing, but it's sold in two pieces. So people are claiming, no, 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 that's a, that's a, a pistol brace. The two weapons are designed to be fired from the shoulder, identically, uh, they, they, for all intents they and purposes. They look the same. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we're treating them the same. That's all that the short, that's all that that right rule says. We're treating these two things the same. 90% of the time, I have no idea what the f I'm talking about. Do you guys want to know how petty the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms is, ATF? Well, you may remember them kicking us off their property and out of their building a few weeks back. Now they have gone ahead and shut down the online eForms website the website used to process NFA applications. A few members of Congress got word of this and they drafted a letter to Director Dettelbach questioning why the ATF's eForms website was shut down. A letter led by Representative Matt Rosendale, signed by Rep Scott Perry and Bob Good. The ATF got back to us, got back to the members of Congress and they cited budgetary concerns, which is bogus because we know the government has yet to shut down. And as we just noted, Speaker Johnson has passed multiple CRs to ensure the government does not shut down. That funding's already been earmarked. The funding is there. E-forms should not have been set to shut down. It was wild, it was bizarre, and due to the action of members of Congress on the Republican side, the website was then put back up two days later. This is good and bad. I want to thank our Republican members of Congress for taking swift action and getting the website put back online. It's also frustrating to know with a few members of Congress and a letter to Director Dettelbach and the ATF, 
they were able to get action done, actionable things done. The website was put back online. Imagine if some of our friends in Congress were to draft letters to the ATF pertaining to CJS or overarching ATF rulings. Maybe we could get some more stuff done. But at the end of the day, a good win here. Hope there's more of it to come. Um, I wanna take a second now to talk about Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell and his potential replacement. You guys may have seen Senator McConnell is set to step down from his position as Republican leader in the United States Senate. And somehow his replacement is arguably and justifiably worse, especially on guns. Yep, that's right. You might remember our old friend, John Cornyn, Senator from Texas, who was instrumental, some may say the driving force behind the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act passing. I just wanna remind everybody what we actually got in the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Red flag funding, age requirements, expansion of misdemeanor gun ban, longer waiting periods, and of course, now we are faced with the engaged in business rule from ATF, which is outwardly said they are taking advantage of texts within the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act that Republican senators said we would never have to worry about. This would never happen. Well, it's happening right in front of our eyes. In April, ATF is set to give their final ruling on their rule of who's engaged in business, which could very easily and probably will lead to universal gun registration all thanks to the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act and our friend, Senator John Cornyn, potentially the next leader of this Republican Senate. If you don't think this piece of legislation was a massive win for the gun control community, just take a look at all these Democrats thanking John Cornyn for his work in passing this legislation. Last year, Congress passed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. And I wanna salute my colleague, Senator Cornyn, who is here with us today, uh, representing the minority. It took real courage, John. Thank you, Senator Cornyn, and thank you again for your leadership with Senator Murphy on the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. I think that we will continue to build on the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which we passed and showed that we can defeat the gun lobby. You may have remember uh, a few weeks ago, we had updated you on the commerce, justice, and science language which is an appropriations bill needed to be passed by Congress every year. It funds generally all of the bad stuff we as gun owners need to look out for. Red flag, uh, background checks, NICS lists. This time around, however, like we said, there was actually some very, very solid pro-gun language in this CJS bill, such as language to defund ATF's pistol brace and homemade firearms rules, language to defund any attempts at an assault weapons ban, and it also prohibited the use of funds for red flag laws, federal firearms registry, and any gun buyback programs. So we had this really, really solid CJS bill ready to be moved to the full house and voted on. Well, per Congress, we were not able to get our work done. We were not able to pass all of our single appropriations bills, and we were up against the deadline or the government would have been shut down. Yes, we've already passed three CR. Speaker Johnson did not want to pass another CR. So what he instead did was packaged a bunch of bills together in a so-called minibus. Six bills in one minibus, six bills in the other minibus. What they did and why it's bad for gun owners is all of that really good CJS language that we just talked about that was ready to be voted on by the full house was put into this package of watered down bills and was stripped out. Now what they're going to tell you is this is a win for gun owners and a win for Republicans. Why? The ATF was cut by 7%, which is a bogus cut. 95% of that was for an earmark um, that was set to expire, not relevant anymore. And they will say that they got the VA amendment provision inserted in the language, which means the VA can no longer report names to the FBI's NICS list of veterans. And that is a pro-gun win. That's a win for gun owners, something that we've been fighting for a long time. But don't let it distract you from what we lost. We lost all of our extremely good pro-gun CJS language. And on top of that, the Undetectable Firearms Act that we've been railing against for months and weeks, you may remember, we got it stripped out of the 2023 Senate NDAA when Democrats tried to permanently reauthorize it. We won that fight, but it wasn't over yet. We knew it wasn't over yet. It was just going to be a negotiation of how long the extension was going to be for. The Democrats asked for another permanent reauth. Republicans caved and gave them seven years. So now the Undetectable Firearms Act, a ban on plastic guns, is now set to expire in 2031. That is a seven year extension. Like I said before, there are some good aspects of this bill. 
and leadership and Republican senators and members of Congress will use this to distract from what we actually lost, and that is a ton of pro-gun language that was originally in the CJS bill that is no longer in this appropriations package. It was a bad negotiation for gun owners, and it was a bad job for Republican negotiators in the House getting the language that we got. If you guys haven't heard yet, we're actually in the process of giving away a fully loaded custom Toyota Tacoma, and this thing is its pretty cool. Uh, we have some clips that we'd like to show you from the range the other day. Take a look at this, and if you haven't entered, go ahead and enter that giveaway.